Okay, Roger once again, Mount Fossil University with the Rainbow River in Colombia has been labeled the most beautiful river in the world, and I would second that. Now, what you see in here is all these different colors. You say, wow, 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 wow. How did that happen? And they oh, that's just algae. Now, I'm going to play this while, you're, while I'm speaking about this, but they're, they're saying that th this is just algae growing here. It's nothing special. Well, I say this is the lung of a gigantic creature, and these are the holes that are in the lungs, and the lungs I have now discovered are the particular device that creates or or collects in some manner transition metals in pockets like this and I will show you in the mud fossils and it's it's um, and, and, and then I'm going to explain why this particular river has these particular colors and not other rivers now let me stop it right there let me show you something I have um, where, okay here it is the I have a, a mud fossil lung right here which you can see is that's what happens here to these to the mud fossil lungs. Now you can actually see the the red and the black blood there, uh, and they will actually create crystals and so forth. I think there's like a, a little crystal right there you might be able to see. But this is what happens to these things. They 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 um, leach out all the stuff on the inside. Now that one's a different story. This one bled everything out and leaked out all of its transition metals. This one died in a different position where all the transition metals ran into the lung. They did not evacuate the lung, which they normally do leave the lungs. But sometimes they don't. And here's, an, here's some that didn't leave the lungs. Here's, here's ones that I have here. Now this is just a very small one. But you can see that that is the colors in those little spots are the same things as the colors in these. Now this is not as vibrant. Uh, I have other ones that, you know, here's one that is flattened out now, but that was a lung at some point. See the blood up there? This is a lung, you see here? Now that you can see a little more color. I hope you can. I, again, I just always never know. But that's, that's, um, that's a half, you know, I cut it in half, of course. But that, you see all the different little colors and specks in there? That's what happens inside these lungs. And, and uh, somehow they're dealing with these transition metals. Now, I've spoken about transition metals over and over and over. And now here's, here's a, the example of a transition metal toe. You see what happened there? That's a toe. And you see the gold and the uh, metals running out of the, the tip of the toe right there? And you got the red and the black. That's the, the vein and the artery. That um, the reason this has so much transition metal is because it's um, the the um, what do you call it the uh, the heavy metals ran down to that toe, and that toe must have been something like this. It must have been at the, the lowest point of the guy's body, and something like this. And that blood tri tried to drain out of this, and it did. It drained out, you see, on the bottom. That's all congealed blood, or, you know, petrified blood, sequestered blood, however you want to determine in terminology there. But that's, that's a petrified toe, mud fossil toe, and that's all from transition metals. All the colors are transition metals. All right, I've gone over this over and over and over and over, so anybody that's on mud fossils is probably going to be bored about this. But these are all the different oxides of metals, and the, the means that, and they're transition metals. That means that they can transition between a low, uh, they can take on two different um, electron states, and that is due to the pH of the the media that it finds itself in. And if it is in such a media that it needs electrons, it can accept them. Some of these can. And if it's in a media that it wants to give up electrons, it, that's also possible. And that is how the transition of your, your chemistry in your body works. It picks up oxygen, it delivers it, it picks up carbon dioxide, brings it up to the lungs, takes your 
uh, ureic acids and so forth to the kidneys and, 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 and then, you know, through your stomach is acid and it comes out into an alkaline solution. It's very, very complex, the, the chemistry, but it's nothing more than transitioning from a negative to a positive and at that point it grabs something or it dumps something off. And if you don't have the right metals in your body, you are going to be sick. That's it. You're going to be sick. Those are the things that make your body work. And if anybody tells you that's not true, well, good. I'm telling you that I, this is the way your body transfers these things in your body. And if you don't have these metals, you're going to be sick. And the bacteria in your body are the things that make these metals, either they produce them or they mine them or whatever. But the bacteria are the things that are in charge of that, metals. And, and, it, and they, they use them in the um, uh, chemical treatment plants to, to absorb up heavy metals. That's what they do. And they found that, uh, some bacteria now, they say it poops gold. Now, I don't know if that's true or it just collects it. But it does create, uh, you can see gold, it creates gold, it's bacteria. Now, and, and there is a ton, there's almost a hundred transition metals. And not only that, it goes all the way up to uranium as a natural transition metal. And uh, my statement is that every single molecule in your body that is a transition metal is required in whatever particular quantity is, is, is correct in the human body. And I don't know what that quantity is. It might be almost nothing. It might literally be nothing. But I would have to see over the course of a huge population of blood study. What is the actual molecules that are in your blood? Let me show you what the transition metals are. Okay, this is um, by study.com. And this is the transition metals. There's a, a hundred transition metals. Scandium, yttrium, lanthanum, all these kind of things, cadmium. Now, we say, oh, those are heavy metals. They're going to hurt you. Well, maybe they will, but maybe they won't. Those are in nature, and I'm saying every single molecule ever created is a natural molecule that comes from a creature. That's my statement. Now, these are all different. Look at vanadium and chromium and magnesium. Oh, this stuff got in your body, you're going to be sick. Not necessarily. There might be some necessity for this because you have a lot of different chemistry in your body and you require stuff for your fingernails and for your toe and for your calluses and cornified skin and, and, and grip skin and the thin skin and... Uh, Keratins and collagens and all of the different fibrins and fibrils and uh, ferritins and I mean you are a chemical factory So don't think that none of this stuff is necessary and if it's in there it's bad not necessarily This needs to be looked at it needs to have this guy what's in your body nobody knows nobody knows this I know there's gold in you I know there's platinum and I know all that stuff now mercury they're not supposed to have any now. I don't know Uranium is a natural element, and I'm saying you probably have that in you because the, the, the new species that we discovered has uranium. Um, we find it with uranium, and that's a transition metal. It's a transition metal. So it is doing a job in you, and I, my thinking is is that these creatures that died long ago had uranium, and I think they might have actually even had that uranium to do something in the body to power the body in some manner. So there's a lot to be looked at here. Look at all that stuff. Properties of transition metals. All right, and it talks all about how they do their job. And that is a toe, I believe, right there. All right, so this is something that needs to be looked at. So we'll go from there. Okay, so to go back through this, this is transition metals bleeding from lungs. And that lung died in some manner where the the heaviest metals ran into that lung and stayed there now they're precipitating out of here that they're not running out of here the the algae is feeding on that algae and 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 moss love the red blood from the, the transition metals and red blood they love it they eat that stuff up like crazy that's why i say when you find mud fossils with moss in them, uh, moss all over them, that's trying to eat something and it, what it is eating is the blood. Alright, that is a mud fossil toe. And if you can see right there, I don't know if you can see that, but that little thing that I just scratched right there, that is the 
the the vein and that's the black blood you see it over here the black blood it doesn't explode out of here it congeals over here and it congeals a chunk here a chunk here and a chunk here this side is the red blood side you see here that was where the red blood comes down and here it is where the red blood comes down you see this is moss you got lichen and moss they love 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 red blood all right so you always got your black blood on one side which is your your uh, vein side and don't forget watch this you see this chunk right here and a chunk right here and then over here it has this sort of wavy pattern go coming in and out see it where do you see this <laughs> hold on a second no and I just showed you that the the way the thing the blood comes down that's the vein side it clogs in here it can't blow out that's the arterial side see that little wavy looking stuff I showed you on a gigantic toe now here I have another uh, a finger that is almost identical to that only it's it's a mud fossil finger it's not gold like that one and here's the here's the mud fossil finger now you can see it's it has the same kind of deal this side it is the side that plugs up just like this well here we put over this side is the side that plugs up like that side now here let's put it over this side this side here plugs up like that side this side here blows out like that side well actually it, it internally it, it fills up with blood with the gold like this it would fill up there of course it blew out here and you see the holes here same thing same hole right there same hole right back there see nothing I'm making up there's one on the end too so that's what and I've been telling people go find them in a gigantic there's gigantic feet full of gold full 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 of gold and I know just where it was, and I've been showing everybody. So if they can find it, they find it. And this is another toe. That was another toe that had all the, the uh, what do you call it, the transition metals in it. So this stuff is around. It's nothing special. There's gold in that one, too. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, that's what it is. Now, that shows that the lungs are have this special situation going on where there's special little bits of, of things in in the lungs that do something special with that transition metals. That's the only thing I can determine from looking at what I'm looking at. Because it's so much different coloration, those are all different transition metals. Why are they in those pockets? That's what I want to know. Here, I'm going to show you something else on gold. Very cool. All right. I've been saying that the blood flows down from a dead creature that is standing, uh, let's say, or lying down, whatever, but it is some very, very low point in that creature, and if the blood has a free path to flow to it, the blood, the, the heaviest metals will end up in the, the veins and so forth, in the veins with these little tubing like that. That's, now, it would come down, and it would make that curve, and it would collect here like it does in a plumbing when it clogs up in the plumbing because it's a heavy metal and uh, I'll show you where it would clog up but it, it's always on the lowest point and if these creatures died standing in the mud which they did and these feet are right there you go down to calcaneus tendon in that where the arterial supply is it's called the uh, calcaneal um, arterial branches I believe it's right in the heel and that's where it's going to be if they were stri standing straight up the artery has no restrictions the guy dies, no more pumping of the of the, the transition metals around through the blood. They say, what am I going to do now? He says, I don't know. Let's just sink to wherever the lowest spot is. This is as if they go down. Case closed. Now, uh, let me show you what that represents in us. All right? That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. It's exactly what we just saw a second ago. The blood comes down here. And it collects right here. You get a little tube running off here, tube running off here. They call those ram's horns. They just don't understand where they came from, but that is where they came from. All right, so get thee to Mud Fossil University. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell everyone you know, tell your children, tell your relatives. They all have to know the truth, and this is the only place you will find it. And I'm going to tell you, that's a fact. I say that with every molecule in my body feeling that that is the truth because there is no other truth out there. Come to Mud Fossil University, no charge. 
You don't like it? That's all. Go away. That's all. You just have a nice day. If it's something that doesn't, you don't like, you don't like new species, you don't like tendons and rocks and this and that. You know, we got it all here for you. So it's up to you. But anyway, Mud Fossil University on YouTube. And um, thanks for watching. And good luck, you know, because you really should be paying attention to this. And the, the, the professors are, are, um, are letting you down. Your, your schools, your universities are letting you down. It's been five, well, it's been six years now that's what I've been pushing this. And I've had DNA tests for at least a couple of years now. Prove everything I say. I have the specimens and every bit of evidence that would be accepted in a court of law. And it may actually end up going that way. I can't, I, not for me, I'm not suing anybody. But if I was a student, I think I would probably want to do something like that. But that's not me. All right, so that's the deal. Mud Fossil University, I'm showing you reality. It's outside the box of of the normal thinking absolutely but anyone that is looking for truth has to examine what's put in front of them if it has a rational credibility to it and it's, everything I'm showing does and I have um, DNA tests and cat scans and all the fossils that I'm showing and, and, and talking about I have I have them and and actually, I believe someone now soon may be doing uh, verifications. This is the thing I'm saying in 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 a whole another independent verification, like a, a peer review. Only the the people that consider themselves to be in their own club don't consider me as anyone. So uh, as far as they're concerned, I'm just nothing, so, and they are only peers among themselves. So this is what, how it's going to come down, and 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 they'll be seen as um, as obstructors of truth. Which they are. I mean, I, I, there's, there's no other way to put it. All right, so have a nice day.